हेलो माय डियर क्यूरियस एंड स्टूडियस स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ सर्जरी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर महेश चौधरी आई एम वार वेलकमिंग यू इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज जिस सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज कंटेंट्स एंटायर सर्जरी विथ एनेसेशिया विथ रेडियोलॉजी विथ ऑर्थोपेडिक सो स्टेट यून विथ अस लेट स्टार्ट आवर सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन माई सर्जरी लेक्चर नंबर सेवेंटी सेवन दैट इज द बॉइल एप्सेस कार्बंकल सिलोलाइटिस एंड इरिसिपेलिस दीज आर द स्मॉल एंटिटीज इन द सर्जिकल फील्ड बट होल्ड्स द ग्रेट सिग्निफिकन्स नाउ स्टार्ट विद द बॉइल दैट इज द फ्रंकल इट इज एन एक्यूट स्टेपिलोकोकल इन्फेक्शन ऑफ हेयर फॉलिकल विथ पेरीफोलिकोलाइटिस सर्ज इन्फेक्शन इजली प्रोसीड्स टू सपरेशन एंड सेंट्रल नेक्रोसिस क्लिनिकल फीचर्स ऑफ द फ्रंकल इज इट स्टार्ट विथ अ पेनफुल and indurated swelling which gradually extends it is associated with tremendous tenderness and surrounding edema on the summit of which a small pustule appears it burst spontaneously discharges greenish small amount of slop a blind boil is one which subsides without suppuration and a star is similar infection of an eyelash follicles this is the typical boil furuncle this is the another image you can watch on your screen and this is third image boil skin abscess collection of the white blood cells and bacteria and the proteins in the furuncle this is a red tender area is clearly seen now the sites of the furuncle are boils are common on the leg on the back and neck furuncle of the external auditory matrix is very painful infections of the perianal fo uh, hair follicles is perianal boils which when ruptures result in a perianal sinus or fistula now the complications of the boil are the boil may lead to cellulitis particularly in those who whose power of immunity is less boils usually secondary to infections of the regional lymph nodes treatment incision is usually unnecessary as a pustule is very small only a touch of iodine or skin pustules will has a necrosis of the overlying skin and help to pus to drain help the pus to drain antibiotic is usually not required Now the second point of this lecture is the abscess and abscess is a collection of pus in the body there are three types of the abscess that is the pyogenic abscess pyemic abscess and the cold abscess first is the pyogenic abscess this is the commonest variety of the abscess organism gain entry to form abscess by the direct in infection from the outside due to the penetration wound local extension from adjacent focus of infection lymphatics and blood stream are hematogenous this is the clear cut image showing the plus collection under the skin this is the another image of pus clinically seen this is the third image now the pathology the separative gradually leads to cell death and liquefaction both tissue cells and those of the excretors are killed by the toxins of pyogenic organism liquefactions of the dead tissue is caused by the proteolytic enzymes released from the dead polymorphonuclear leukocytes these results a low alkaline fluid is called pus it contains both disintegrating and living leukocytes and living dead bacteria an abscess is is a cavity filled with pus and lined by a pyogenic membrane this pyogenic membrane consists of dead tissue cells and a wall of granulation tissue consisting for a most part of the phagocytic histocytes sometimes the abscess cavity persists which becomes firm and contains sterile pus the firmness is due to the thickness of its wall This is known as the antibioma. This is due to the continuous administration of antibiotics. The lump may be even be hard when it may mimic a carcinomatous lump. Now the clinical features of the abscess are redness and rubber. There is a redness over the area, particularly before localization of the abscess. This is due to the hyperemia. Second point is the pain or dollar. A uh, throbbing pain is a characteristic presence of pus. Heat and calor. The inflamed area is a hot due to the hyperemia. in cold abscess this is not present and that is why it is called as a cold cold abscess swelling or tumor due to presence of pus inside the abscess cavity impairment of functions or function lisa the functions of the part is definitely impaired of these five signs that is the rubber dollar calor tumor and impairment of functions and uh, the symptoms important should be given to pain redness and heat now the presence of pus is detected by the temperature becomes elevated there is a browny edema with induration when the pus is deep seated that is in the breast parotid glands and ischiorectal fossa when the pus becomes superficial fluctuate test will be positive 
now the investigations is to be made in the abscess that is the conventional radiology is only successful when there is a air or gas with pus the examination then reveals fluid level that is the subphrenic abscess lung abscess and sometimes presence of pus is suggested by the opacity that is in the nasal antrum and pleural cavity etc isotope scanning is helpful in locating the collection of the pus or site of infection by accumulation of the radioactive technetium after its intravenous injection this is mostly used as a diagnostic tool in the demonstrating brain abscess hepatic abscess and osteomyelitis similarly radioactive gallium scan is sometimes used to detect the pelvic perinephric and mediastinal or subphrenic abscesses ultrasound is of considerable value in the diagnosis of the gallbladder stones or empyema and also to detect the abscesses in the liver or spleen ct scan is particularly helpful to distinguish between the abscesses and tumor by showing the necrotic centers in the case of abscess it is helpful to locate abscess cavity inside the abdomen as also in the brain now the treatment of the abscess is in the initial stage when the pus is not localized conservative treatment may be advised when the pus has been localized it should be drained the old adage holds true today also that is the where there is a pus let it out it should be drained so the basic principle of the treatment of an abscess is to drain the pus to send a sample of pus for culture and sensitivity test to know the bacteria or organism to give proper and for giving the proper antibiotic now drainage of pus the incision drainage of pus can be obtained by free incision or by hilton's method free or liberal incision is this in this technique the liberal incision is made on the most prominent part of the abscess so as to cause the least damage to the surrounding healthy tissue hilton's method technique to drainage the pus is in this technique the skin and, and subcutaneous tissue are incised on the most prominent and most dependent part of the abscess cavity a pair of artery forceps or sinus forceps is forced through the deep fascia into the abscess cavity the blades are gradually open and the pus is since to be extruded out the forceps is now taken out with the jaws open continuously to increase the opening in the deep fascia a finger is inserted to explore the abscess cavity to disturb or to destroy their or lacunae exploration all the walls of the lacunae are broken there must not be any loculus unbroken as this will lead to chronicity of the abscess all lacunae are broken into one cavity for complete drainage now the counter incision a corrugated rubber drain is usually used for the drainage of an abscess cavity after 48 hours the draining or the drain should be removed fresh dressing is done every day with the acriflavin lotion and sterile gauze vitamin b complex should be given when tetracycline is used as a antibiotic now the third type of the abscess is the pyemic abscess in this condition multiple abscesses develop from infected emboli in pyemia pyemia is a condition characterized by the formation of the secondary fossae of suppuration in various parts of the body these fossae are caused by the lodgments of septic emboli consisting of a clump of organism infected clot and uh, vegetations form as the result of the breaking up of an infected thrombus such pyemia is also seen in acute appendicitis when the infective emboli pass into the portal venous system and cause portal pyemia forming multiple pyemic liver abscess first is the bacteremia this term merely indicates that the bacteria are circulating in the blood stream is probably occurs in every infection and particularly after every uh, tooth extraction due to the caries and major traumatic wounds second is the septicemia this is the condition characterized not only by the presence of the bacteria in the blood as shown by the blood cultures but also by the development of the certain clinical manifestation due to the liberation of toxins by those bacteria these clinical manifestations are mainly pyrexia rigors hypotension intravascular coagulation defects and petechial hemorrhages septicemia may be caused by the alpha hemolytic streptococci that is the streptra uh, viridens as a consequence of the sub acute bacterial endocarditis treatment is immediate administration of subtle antibiotic found only uh, out by at least three blood cultures together with an aminoglycosides and metronidazole all intravenously should be given administered blood transfusion plasma expanders and hydrocortisone should be given now the next is the toxemia in this condition toxins either chemical or bacterial circulate in the blood stream these produce toxemic symptoms these features pyemic abscess are these features of pyemic abscess are these are generally multiples these abscesses commonly occurs in the subfacial plane the abscesses are non reacting in nature and features like calor rubor dolor are absent constitutional disturbances are tremendous with high fever rigors and toxemia such abscesses may occur in the viscera that is the spleen or kidneys death by occurs 
from such abscesses in the vital organs like brain or heart. Treatment is to administer the suitable antibiotics parenterally as quick as possible. The antibiotics is chosen by culture and sensitivity test of the organism of the pulse, the superficial abscesses should be drained. Now the third is the cold abscess. First is the pyemic abscess, pyogenic abscess and third is the cold abscess. As the name suggests, this abscess is cold and non-reacting in nature. It does not produce hot and painful abscess as seen in pyogenic abscess. Brownie induration, edema and tenderness are copious conspicuous by their abscess. Only when this is associated with secondary infection, a few of these features may be present. Cold abscess is almost always a sequel of tubercle infections anywhere in the body, commonly in the lymph nodes, bones and joints. The commonest sites are at the neck and axilla. Treatment Once the diagnosis is confirmed, full anti-tubercular regimen should be started. If the cold abscess continues to be present, aspiration may be attempted obliquely through the normal surrounding skin and not through the most prominent and most dependent part as this invariably cause sinus formation. If the local abscesses will persist, the affected group of lymph nodes should be excised as a whole. A word of caution is highly important that an incision should not be made on the cold abscess for drainage as it almost always invites the secondary infection and forms a persistent sinus. So always remember that they should not be made the incision on a cold abscess for drainage. Now the next entity, next point of this lecture is the carbuncle. It is an in infective gangrene of the subcutaneous tissues due to the staphylococcal, staphylococcus aureus infections. Gram-negative bacilli and streptococci may be found coincidentally. Sites carbuncles are mostly seen on the back side in the nape of the uh, neck where the skin is coarse and vitality of the tissue is less. So the carbuncle is always developed there at the nape of the neck. Pathology when the invading the staphylococci penetrate the deeper layers of the skin and uh, the subcutaneous tissue fat, a carbuncle is formed. This consists of a series of communicating abscesses which discharge by the separate openings on the surface. That is why the surface is sieve like. Individual compartments in the carbuncle are maintained, though persistence of facial attachment of the skin. Carbuncles may be more extensive than they appear. There, there is a central large slope or surrounded by a rosette of small areas of necrosis. Dear students, here is the image on your screen. You are watching typical picture of the carbuncles. That is in the nape of the neck. This is the another image of the carbuncle. Third image of the carbuncle. If untreated, cases infections may extend widely by the fresh opening appears on the surface, which coherence with those previously formed under treatment when the central slope is drained off. Fibroblastic reaction starts from the surrounding granulation tissue and carbuncle heals with a characteristic induration. Clinical features of the carbuncles are it generally affects male above 40 years of age. Often the subject is diabetic, painful and stiff swelling which spread very rapidly with marked induration. The overlying skin becomes red, dusky and edematous. Multiple vesicles appear on the skin. Later on, these vesicles transforms into the pustules. These pustules subsequently burst, allowing the discharge to come out through several openings in the skin, producing a sieve-like or cribriform appearance, which is the pathognomonic of the carbuncles. Now the treatment of the carbuncles are improvement of the general health of the patient should be brought about. Proper antibiotics should be started immediately from the culture sensitivity test. Hot compresses is helpful before bursting. It may be supplemented by the infrared or short wave diathermy. Operation may be required when the toxemia and the pain persist even after a course of the antibiotics and when the carbuncle is more than two and a half inches in diameter, it must be remembered that the incision is never made unless there is softening in the center. Technique. A large crusade incision is made extending up to the margins of the inflammatory zone. Now the next point is the cellulitis. It is non-supportive inflammation spreading along the subcutaneous tissue and connective tissues planes and across intercellular spaces. The causative organism is mostly the streptococcus pyrogens, though a variety of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria may produce cellulitis. Clinical features, there is a varying degree of fever and toxemia. The affected part is very much swollen and painful. Diabetic individuals often suffer from cellulitis. The regional lymph nodes will be enlarged and tender with acute lymphadenitis. Dear students, here is a clear picture of the cellulitis. The inflammation spreading along the subcutaneous tissue and connective tissue planes and across the intercellular spaces of the leg. This is the another image of the cellulitis. Treatment consists of rest and elevation of the part of the 
reduce edema to reduce the edema appropriate antibiotic preferably broad spectrum should be administered failure of the inflammatory swelling to subside after 48 to 72 hours suggests that an abscess has developed in that case incision and drainage of the pus should be accomplished now the last point of this lecture is the erythropoiesis it is an acute inflammation of the lymphatics of the skin or mucous membrane the causative organism is usually streptococcus hemolyticus group a that is the strepto pathogens pathology of the erythropoiesis is the organism usually gain entrance through a minor wound like a scratch which may be escape notice but a break in the surface is always present the disease spread from the site of of inoculation of the advancing margins become bright red and slightly red above the general surface clinical features these condition which predisposes these disease are deliberately state and poor health to distinguish between a true erythropoiesis and a ciliated the point in favor of erythropoiesis should be borne in mind that is the a typical rosy rash disappears on pressure and feels stiff second point is the red rash of the erythropoiesis has a sharply defined margins which is better felt than inspected third point is the vesicles of the erythropoiesis contain serum is contradistinction to the ciliates in which they contain the pus and the fourth point in case of the face millions years sign is significant in which erythropoiesis can spread into the pinna being circular affection whereas the ciliates cannot spread to the pinna due to the close adhesion to the skin to the cartilages of the ear without any areolar tissue now the complications of the erythropoiesis are sloughing of gangrene rarely occurs particularly in grossly deliberated or diabetic individuals and second complication is the in lymphoedema may rarely occur due to the lymphatic obstruction which occurs more in parts containing loose areolar tissue that is the eyelids or scrotum dear students here is the end of our lecture number 77 that is the boil abscess carbuncle cellulitis and erythropoiesis thank you